My name is Jeff Badger, the grinding doc, and we're here at Rush Machinery doing some tests on truing of diamond wheels. And we're using my grindometer device to measure the power in the grinding wheel spindle, and then that gives us a wealth of information about what's going on in the process. So let's take a look real quick about what actually is the grindometer. So this is my personal grindometer. I've had this for 10 or 15 years. And what we do is we measure the power in the machine. So we just tap into the back of the cabinet. We measure voltage uh, in all three phases. We measure current in all three phases with the Hall Effect transducer. We rectify that signal to get true power, not just amps, not just current, but we actually get true power in kilowatts or horsepower in the machine and that gives us uh, a lot of information about what's going on in the process. So we've had this one hooked up to the Rush truing machine and we're here truing a diamond wheel uh, with a silicon carbide wheel today. And this is what we have from two different tests that we did. So we can zoom in here and say, okay, what's going on in this axis? We have power in watts, could do it in horsepower, but here we have it in watts. Um, and this maximum scale is 1,000 watts or one kilowatt is our top. And then we go down to zero. So what we do is we start off, we have zero power and when the machine is shut off. Then we fire up the machine and we get an idle power just to spin the wheel. Now in this case, we measured power in the silicon carbide wheel because that one typically has the higher power than the diamond wheel. And so then the wheel idles and we get a little bit of noise, electrical noise, and the wheel is idling, so we get our idle power. And then we start to do our truing. And then what we have is the power, and we zoom in, and what we get is each traverse. Forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. And then we can look at that for different parameters and say, okay, this set of parameters gave that profile, this set of parameters gave this profile. What does that profile look like? We can see which parameters give more power, less power. Power is proportional to the forces, so which forces are more likely to give us chatter. Then we can convert that into something called specific energy, which is a common a parameter used in grinding and also in truing now, to figure out how much energy is required to remove a cubic millimeter. That'll tell us about the efficiency of the process. And then in general, it just tells, gives us a picture of what's going on. So it gives us a picture of where the cycle time is being taken up, how the wheel is behaving, is the grinding wheel doling, is the grinding wheel loading, is the grinding wheel loading and then what's called collapsing, is it giving you steady wear, steady self-sharpening. And then we can use that information to evaluate our processes. So we uh, spent a couple days doing these tests and we'll be spending the next few weeks Processing the results, uh, typically processing takes longer than the test uh, if you're going to do it right. And the parameters we're looking at, uh, we're looking at the power, uh, the forces, the forces that are being generated. Uh, and then we're looking at basically how quickly we can true this guy up, dress him. Uh, people complain that it takes a long time to dress diamond wheels, and it certainly can, especially if you have a harder metal bond. Um, so the first parameter we look at is what's called the D-ratio. Kind of, you can call it the G ratio too. Basically, when we true this guy up, for every, let's say, one cubic millimeter that we remove uh, from the wheel, we consume, let's say, 50 cubic millimeters of silicon carbide or aluminum oxide wheel to do that. And one of the things that drives people crazy is sometimes it just takes forever to true their wheel. So that D ratio is not 50, it's maybe 200, which means they've got to consume a hell of a lot of silicon carbide to remove whatever amount of diamond that they want to remove. So the D ratio, volume of this divided by volume of this, and ideally that number will be small so we don't have to consume as much silicon carbide uh, or aluminum oxide to true that guy up. So I have some preliminary results, um, some pretty basic stuff. We will get into the more hardcore calculations later. Uh, but what we can see, for example, is this one. We have the depth of dress, and here we did it at one, two, three different depths. We did it at a thou, 25 microns, half a thou, 12 microns, and two thou, 50 microns. And then we have the D ratio. Uh, so again, we want a low D ratio because a low D ratio 
means it's not taking as long to dress our diamond wheel. Uh, and what we can see here is a half a thou, 12 microns, gives us a higher D ratio. And as we get closer to two microns or two thou, 50 microns, we get a lower D ratio as we expect um, because we're just more aggressive on that. Uh, what we also see is the different grid sizes. So we've done it at a 120 mesh aluminum oxide, 60 mesh aluminum oxide, uh, 60 mesh means a bigger grit, 100 mesh silicon carbide and 54 mesh silicon carbide. And I've given the, the size of these little data points uh, relative to the size of the grits. So we can see that bigger grits means you can true away more quickly. Most people already know that. Um, and there are rules of thumb that people give to say, oh, you want your grit size to be at least double the grit size of the diamond, triple, things like that. So we can see those general trends, uh, what we have. One of the questions that comes up quite frequently is, should we use silicon carbide or aluminum oxide? Silicon carbide is a little more common, uh, green silicon carbide, because it's a little bit harder than aluminum oxide. Uh, but you could argue that, hey, these things are still not even close to the hardness of diamond, so does it really matter? And the short answer to that really was nobody knows. Um, you know, everyone's got their own opinion about a silicon carbide better than aluminum oxide. Uh, I've seen people using both a lot. Uh, so just a quick investigation into this what we have over here is the mesh size so 54 mesh 60 mesh 100 mesh 120 mesh and then when we have the green data points that's silicon carbide uh, and then we have the blue data points that's aluminum oxide and in this case here this guy was a 25 micron or thou let's see this one this one was a 25 micron or a thou depth of cut, and then this one was the half a thou or 12 micron depth of cut. So let's stick with one thou, it's a little bit more typical. So what we can see is, okay, a finer grit, which means a higher mesh number, gives me a higher D ratio, which is not what I really want. I want to be low. Um, so that all fits, and the same curve is true both for 25 microns or 12 microns. Uh, but what we can also see is it doesn't really seem to matter whether we're using aluminum oxide or silicon carbide, they're both giving this fit on the same line uh, for this. Now there are various other factors. There's the hardness of the, the abrasive, or uh, excuse me, the hardness of the bond, uh, things like that. But just from this, what we see right here, it doesn't appear to matter. It doesn't appear to be a big factor, let's say, between the aluminum oxide and the silicon carbide. And what I typically like to see things not plotted as mesh size, but plotted as a relative size between the diamond and the aluminum oxide. So here we have the diameter of the truing grit divided by the diameter of the diamond grit. So one would mean they're the same size. And then as we get further away from one, the silicon carbide or aluminum oxide is getting bigger relative to the diamond. And then as we can see, okay, if we're at 1.5, we're not doing too well. We get around three times as large, we're doing pretty well. And then maybe after three, we're not you know, getting seeing that big of a difference. So we are seeing some trends uh, to say, hey, we don't want to be too small uh, because this is going to take us longer to true our guy. So that's, you know, and this is all reasonable stuff. Um, and we know this kind of as rules of thumb so far, even if we don't have good data on this. Now what we can do is we can mess around with saying, okay, well, I can get different D ratios different ways. I can get that same D ratio of 20 by using a big aluminum oxide grit uh, but going at a uh, smaller depth or by using a smaller silicon carbide grit and going at a more aggressive depth. Then one of the limiting factors in this is all of a sudden if you're grinding too aggressively, you're truing too aggressively, your wheel starts to chirp, starts to chatter because uh, we get big forces acting on this guy. So this is a cup wheel, um, but let's say we're doing it on a 1A1 wheel like this. We get a big force pushing on this guy, a big force pushing on this guy, and all of a sudden these guys start vibrating and start chattering and protesting, and it's not a pretty thing. And then we um, are chattering our workpiece, which is a bad thing. So what we can do is say, well, is it better to go with one set of conditions or another, or is it better to go with a small grid and be more aggressive, or a big grid and be less aggressive? So what we can do is we can pull up these two cases. Um, so in this case, we used a 100 mesh wheel. 
uh, in silicon carbide and took a big depth. So we've got, relatively speaking, a small grit, but we're being more aggressive. And this is the power in the silicon carbide spindle. This is measured in watts over here. So we get quite a big variation, and we're anywhere from, say, 300 watts. Now this is, we have to subtract out the idle power, too. So 300 minus 100 would be 200 watts, as big as, say, almost 600 watts, so 500 watts. So 200 to 500 watts, uh, and the power is proportional to the force, uh, the tangential force. Whereas if we go with the other one, now here, here we have the 60 mesh aluminum oxide, so we got a bigger grit, but we're being more timid in our depth. So we're not being as aggressive with that guy, but we just got a bigger grit. Both are dressing the wheel, truing the wheel up in about the same time. But this guy now is only pulling about 150 watts to maybe 250 watts. So much less power, which means lower tangential forces, lower normal forces, lower risk of chatter. So in the coming weeks, what we're going to do is explore this and figure out these relationships to say, okay, we want to true as quickly as possible. We want to true as small forces as possible so we can get that guy uh, trued up without having the risk of chatter. What's the best way to do it? What's the best combination of do it in terms of grit size, aggressiveness, relative grit size of the diamond, and things like that. So stay tuned. We will be doing a comprehensive evaluation of this and hopefully developing some parameters in a spreadsheet to say, okay, if you want to achieve this, what's the best parameters to do it at so that you can get the uh, quickest removal but not get too big forces uh, on your spindle.